My name's Kirk Johnstone. You're watching On The Trowel. Today, I'm going to be plastering a bedroom in a 1960s house and the walls are all over the show. Let's go. First order of the day, I need to go and get some plaster. These walls are um, um, bare plaster, really high suction. So SPR does a nice job of sealing that. Um, there's a few little cracks in the stud walls. Let me see if you can see this. Can you see that? These little hairline cracks. You follow the shape of the plaster boards. So I'm gonna take those up now and then put some beads on and we'll be ready to start skimming. The walls are still wet with SBR and scrim won't stick to a wet background. So if that's the situation you find yourself in, put them in place and then roll them on with some more SBR and they'll stay put. We've got beads for each corner. We're using hook on beads. The reason being is um, I buy them in bulk, I buy like 10 boxes at a time. Uh, it just works out loads cheaper. But these were the only one, well these were the best price. These are ideally for plasterboard because they hook onto the plasterboard. They don't work that great. It's better to put nails on and they definitely don't work on these skins, but we can just nail them on. Little bit of a challenge for today, a bit different because all of our buckets, everything that belongs, all of our mixing stuff is all on another job that we've ultimately been rained off and rained off and rained off so we haven't been there. So today, because we didn't want to drive 30 miles one way to get some buckets, we've had to buy some new ones, which Kieran's highly delighted about because he doesn't like cleaning them, evidently. So we've got new mixing bucket, some new water buckets, these, by the way, will be going straight on the skip after we finish with these because they're absolutely useless. You only have to look at them buckets and they split. Ah, full, okay. Been around all the stud walls, we've checked everywhere for cracks. Um, we we'll take those up. We're a bit concerned about the wires being in the wall, so we're not going to put any extra screws in. Um, and also, there's no pop screws, so we've just taped all those up. We're all beaded. The SBR has completely set. So I always like to wet my finger, you can see. It's completely dried out. There's no suction now. So it's been quite easy for me now. I'm going to put all these walls on. Um, all these walls. These basically. A couple of little nibs in this room will be done. All I'm trying to do, really, all that's going through my mind is thinking I don't want to get it all over these wardrobes. Sort of the less mess you can make, the better. I can reach the ceiling off the floor, so I don't need a crease on a press up. I can just stretch and reach. Thank you. 
so I know when uh, when I'm going over this wall, the fact that it trials leaving lines everywhere, even though I'm trying my best not to let it do it, tells me that the wall's hollow, that it's not a straight wall, it's, it's, it's in and out in places, so I just know when I come to put another coat on, I've got to go again quite thick to try and straighten out as best as we can. Fairly newish house. These walls are all over the place. I don't get it because for the original plasters, to put the walls in wonky is harder. It's actually easier to do a nice job and make them straight. So I think what they did was a lot of the time in the 70s, a lot of walls, when they were floated with sand and cement, were just done freehand. They weren't really ruled off that much. All I'm thinking while plastering these walls is, wow, I can't believe how out of shape this is. Just even trying to fill these beads up is horrendous. So what it seems to me is the last guy that plastered this wall, he's put his beads on proud and curled his wall out to the beads rather than getting the wall flat. So when I've come along and put my beads on top, I've got to ultimately build out to my beads, but also rectify what he didn't do as well. So my plasters have to go on double thick just to get the wall nice and flat. So the main thing for me is to just work methodically. Okay, don't panic. Don't start losing sight and going crazy all over the place. I'm just literally taking my time, working left to right, doing the way that I know works best. And in case you're wondering, yeah, that was a little baby's wimp as you could hear. I've got my son in here whilst I'm editing the video and he's absolutely terrorising me. <laughs> horrible this because I'm used to the stuff going on dead neat I'm used to putting it on and it's just laying on lovely but this because the walls just seem to be a bit higgledy piggledy everything is leaving a line but don't worry too much about it a nice thick second coat and it'll all come out nice when you trial it up I always want to fill out your beads across them like this because they're quite thick especially these hook on beads these are extra thick compared to all beads so you always want to go across first so that the thing is completely built out like so and then you can start bringing closing the edges in being careful not to take it all back out from the bead again which I will check again now just by even one of them that's a cheat and use my toolbox just for up here to make it a bit easier for me you 
Your trowel needs to be razor sharp to do that though. Okay, we're just mixing up a little bit more now. That's how far one bag has got us. We've gone from there, inside the chimney, breast, round, outside, and across that wall. I'm still yet to plaster all inside there. The bottom here, we've got this wall to do, and that little nib over there. Okay, so what you will ultimately, you don't really want to get it all over the window frames if you can help it. So, just take a little bit and go in neat. Show them where we're up to. We're on the last little stretch now. We've just got the bottom, the last little bottom of this wall and um, just this little bit behind the door. But as you know, Bare plaster is a high suction background, so I've been testing over here, I've been feeling it, and it's it's starting to pull in a little bit, so we could lose it. We'll see. I'll have to um, speed up a little bit and um, get a nice wet second coat on this as soon as I can. Now this is took two bags to put on. So you know whatever your first coat is, when you come put your second coat on, it's gonna be half of that. So it's two bags to put it on. You know, it's just gonna be one more bag. It's a second coat and, uh, and that'll be it. We'll start trialing up. Now some guys will go round and flatten the first coat in. But I try and put it on fairly neat. There's no real big lines in it. And if I spot any, like this, I just flatten them in and that way then you don't have to go round and, um, and flatten the whole thing in. I mean if you're the beginner there's no harm in doing it but it's just an extra step in the process. Okay, we've just reached the point now where we're going on to the second bucket. If you know when we did the first coat, it was done in two buckets. Um, and we're just reaching the point now where we're getting to the second bucket, which is a bit fresher stuff. So this is still a lot more squidgy, a lot more wet than what the, the first bucket was. That was um, going off a little bit more. So that's the thing with plastering. You always gotta remember, it's not like any other trade, you, you can't just stop, it, um, the stuff is always setting. The only thing I hate, getting around little tight sockets like that, you end up getting it on the skirting board and it's just cleaning down and you know, it's better if you can not get any on the skirting board but I always, I always manage to get a little bit smeared on the top whenever I do under sockets. Kieran's gone to wash out so I'm going to start, I'm going to start smoothing all this out now. Um, now, when you put your trial on the wall, if it feels like it's not smoothing it very well and it's going to need water, 
then you know you definitely need to speed up a little bit. So this is just at say, the borderline. I might just have to apply a little bit of water just to get this to come down nice for the first trial. And ultimately that lets me know if I'm having to apply water, that I need to go quicker. So just keep the back edge of your trial nice and clean. You can't leave a clean job with a dirty trial. And what I'll do is, I'll just brush along, along the angles. Like so. walls were all over the show but it's still important once you brought your angle in like that still take the angle and you want to make sure it's squared off this way now ultimately to do this I had to put a lot of finish up here because the last the last plaster had really curved them walls in you know they were like that Can we take the switches off for, can he? Can he? Who took the switches off? Kieran whispers when he's on camera. Yeah. Okay. Just giving this now the uh, the first official wet trial, and it's still pulling in quite quick. Still haven't got it. Um, I still haven't got time to sort of sit down and have me. I haven't got time to sit down and have me traditional cup of coffee, but I suppose we'll be home faster anyway. So, we're getting there now, I'm not far off, I've just got to give it the final trowel and a polish. Um, we have got to go, just look inside here, we've got the inside of these boxes to cut out nice and square, and we always do that just at the end, um, before we polish, we just use a small tool and cut those back out nice and square again, and um, there's one over there as well, and you can see now that there's little little dark patches starting to form uh, like here so that's how I know it's basically ready it's near the end it just needs a good good hard trowel and a quick flick over of a polish and that will do us okay we're on the last wet trowel now then after this it'll just be a polish now I as of yet still <coughs> I as <laughs> I'll edit this out <laughs> probably won't I as of yet still haven't done anything with my angles I've just been going into them neat but ultimately once this trial's finished once I've been around the whole room just before the polish I will go round and I'll just run my trial like this down the angles and as you can see 
it just finishes them perfect. And then obviously we'll just hit it with the angle brush as well. But that's how I finish the angles. I don't really, I don't bother with a corner trowel. It's just for me, I just think they're slower. And more things to carry around as well. Whilst this is still soft. That's it, the room's done, finished. Let's go for a pint.